you want to speak as well tonight? Thank you. So I'm going to take your three minutes as well. I've been in front of this board several times. The two new members don't know me. Welcome to the board. And I love the fact there's a lot of great things going on with students, but I'm not here to sing kumbaya. In the past, I've approved accolades to certain administrators, said how great they were, please just take notes, do not say that tonight. My comments are direct. Mr. Stern, I'm tired and frustrated with your behavior. I've sat here for almost a year and a half. Dr. Emmers, you will attest to that, wanting something to be done on behalf of my son. And nobody seems to care. All the members of the board, you now have documentation in your hands, which I have had since August of 2015. You have, Mr. Stern, a member of your staff who has been found guilty by your own standards of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. I have six cases. If you'd like to follow along in the letter that I gave you, the very first thing, Mr. Ramos, according to your letter, it says, the initial finding that Alex not making the team was not HIV will be reversed. Mr. Stern, my son was cut. And all you did was make false promises. The first time I was lied to was August 14th, 2014. I promise, Mr. Nathan, we'll do everything we can. We take this matter seriously. In your office, Ms. Karen. For a year and a half, my son was cut. No one seemed to care. Oh, but wait, we'll put him back on the team. So I sat through a meeting on March 13th, an embarrassing meeting to help protect my son. 30 seconds. I got there minutes. Okay? So now I'm here to show you. Harassment intimidation number one, Mr. Stern, March 11th. My son experienced harassment intimidation and bullying. April 6th, my son experienced harassment intimidation and bullying. The second time you lied to me, Mr. Stern, was on March 31st. A dozen of his parents sat in your office, and you sat there and promised you were going to do something. Did you? No, you did not. Okay, Mr. Nathan, uh, this is a public speech. It's I understand. Not, and, and you are permitted to address the board. You are addressing a staff member mm -hmm. personally. You are presenting your testimony to the board. So now please direct your comments to the board. And I will ask you, while we understand that these are these are issues of grave concern to you and your family as they are to the Board of Education and to this community. We would ask that we, despite the emotion, which is understandable, that we try and maintain a tone of civility. And I am doing my policies. best, but I'm tired of maintaining a tone of civility, Ms. Baker. I've sat back for over a year and a half with false promises by a number of people on this board, in this school administration. I am not going away. I am not going away. My son was not the only one impacted. We have 10 cases of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. 10. And you allow this to go on with no resolution except, don't worry. Now, what's going to happen, Ms. Baker, is your administrators decide to dump it off on you. Because the state has come in and found this school to be in violation of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. But just for one time, they're coming back again. Five more times because five times I submitted HIV reports and five times the law was not followed. So I did a test this past week. I submitted an Oprah request. For those who know what Oprah is, it's an open public records document. And amazing enough, Southport's Maple did follow that law. You know what's even more amazing? What's even more amazing is the information that I got. The same reports that I have here, which means this is public information for the board. So that means every single one of you sitting on this board has at some point voted and acknowledged HIV in your baseball program. And if you haven't voted on it, that's because there's been mistruths and twists and turns. So yes, the state is aware of it. They found two cases of non-violation. Five more times. Your assessment that you approved in the fall at Columbia High School went from a 50 to a 67 meaning you did a 30% increase when the state came in and found violations all last year? I'm sorry, you're being hoodwinked. You're not being spoken to professionally or ethically. And my son has still not been apologized to. Accept responsibility. 
I've been coming here as patient as I can be. Just accept responsibility. These wonderful policies you're going to do, those are great. They're at the expense of my son. These athletic components, directors and coaches, are direct reflection of what happened to my son. Accept responsibility. In January of 2015, the Anti-Bullying Task Force made it very clear that HIV covers any kind of behavior against a student. Student to student and adult to student. Made it very clear. Not once in this school district followed that law. Six times I've submitted. As a matter of fact, almost submitted after a meeting we had in, in his office in June. It's right here. The entire school year says right here. Harassment, intimidation, bullying. So I'll end with this. We have a picture. Two pictures. One is my son. He's being isolated by himself in a situation where the coaches were on the side trash talking my son to other players. Don't let Alex Nathan bring the team down. Don't let Alex Nathan interfere with what we're doing here. Not one coach approached my son, let's go for a walk. And was he angry? Yes. And finally, you now have postage on a Facebook poster of your booster club saying that losers assemble in small groups. Winners find a way to win. Your program, Mr. Nathan, you've reached your time. Is winners and losers. Think about how you're treating this situation. You're hiding stuff from everybody in this community. If you're doing it with the sports team, you're doing it elsewhere. Thank you for your time.